Thank you very much, Tim. And the uh, following presentation, the presentation that I'll be giving will be all about gas to power generation in Botswana with a, a few add-ons as well. Next slide, please. And next. So Talao Energy, uh, we've been developing and delineating a very large gas field in Botswana for many years now. And uh, of course, getting uh, the approvals process all completed takes a long time uh, anywhere, but uh, Africa is no exception. And we're at the stage now where we've gotten uh, all key uh, approvals achieved to uh, not only uh, continue to drill out the field, uh, develop the, uh, the development wells, uh, collect the gas, put it into a power station and, uh, and uh, turn it to electricity. Um, that has culminated in a, a 10, an initial 10 megawatt power purchase agreement with a Botswana Power Corporation. The government owned a power utility there. Uh, we are the first ones to actually get a, an independent power project up with uh, Botswana Power Corp. And uh, we view that as a, a major achievement. And the next step of the project is really to convert our gas to electricity and to, to, to deliver into that uh, contract. Next slide, please. So our process flow, uh, the primary objective is to uh, convert our, our gas into electricity and sell it into the existing grid at a nearby town uh, called Saroe. And with that objective, we're currently building a uh, transmission line, which is fully funded by our largest shareholder being the Botswana Public Officers Pension Fund, a local pension fund, also the largest investor in Botswana. We have add-ons of uh, solar because it makes sense in the uh, Botswana region that we're based. It has a very high solar incidence and works perfectly with a gas-fired power to to deliver ultimately 24 seven, a cleaner energy into the grid. We also have a, a prototype developing for a, a plasma pyrolysis unit, and that will take our gas directly, our methane gas, and split it off into uh, hydrogen and solid carbon. Next slide, please. Our company is uh, triple listed. We started out on the Australian Stock Exchange, migrated to London when resources weren't that in vogue here a, a number of years back. And we're about 50-50 between those two exchanges, uh, the UK and Australia. And we're also on the Botswana Stock Exchange because that allowed investment by local uh, institutions and culminated in the pension fund taking a significant stake in us. About 600 million shares on issue. Thank you. Our board, uh, extensive experience myself, I've been the founder of a number of public companies, always starting them from the, from the grassroots, from, from uh, uh, vacant acreage, uh, and then developing the resource up to the point of sale. And that is the objective, and that's where we're progressing with Talao Energy as well. Next slide. We clearly have a, uh, an experience, a field operations team as well, are largely based in Botswana. We own our project 100%. We drill all our own wells and we like to have full control of uh, drilling our wells because that helps us keep in control of the costs as well. And that picture is, uh, is our field base in the edge of, on the edge of the Kalahari Desert, showing some of our equipment uh, that we use in our drilling operation. Next slide. So the actual location, the map shows where we're based. We are to the north of the capital city of Haveroni and essentially in the middle of Botswana. It's actually quite easy to get to though, only about three hours drive from the capital city. The capital city's less than an hour from Joburg to fly. The country has an extensive and modern electricity grid and we're looking at joining that grid with a transmission line in the dotted purple on that map. The objective is to get into the grid at Saroe, and then the initial power contract will be with Botswana Power Corporation. And then we can expand all else being equal up to the Arapa Diamond Mine, the Arapa Diamond Mine, the largest diamond mine in the world. 
uh, produces several a billion dollars of diamonds a year, and it goes through about 90 megawatts uh, of diesel a year. So uh, that's a, a very big opportunity to convert that diesel to our gas uh, with time. Next slide. So it's all about addressing the power deficits in the region with newer sources of cleaner energy. And that's our focus, uh, Tim. And uh, our energy will indeed displace the uh, very uh, carbon intensive coal fire power station. There's a picture of the main one there with the two smokestacks. It will assist in uh, displacing and replacing that ultimately and also displacing the billion odd US dollars of diesel that is burnt in the country uh, just in Botswana to keep the lights on every year. Next slide. So our Lacetti Gas of Power project is our flagship project. We have all approvals in place, including a generation license and an initial power purchase agreement with Botswana Power Corporation. The ongoing exercise, uh, the operation in the field right as we speak is to, uh, is building the grid connection by the transmission line from Lacetti the approximate 100 kilometres to the nearby town of Saroe, and that is progressing uh, and is more or less on track for completion at the middle of next year, and that keeps us on track for the objective of first revenue towards the end of next year. We have a planned drilling program to delineate and flow more gas as we're building up to that uh, grid connection and being able to commercialise, effectively commercialise any new gas flow rather than simply flaring it, which we're currently doing. Next slide. We extract our gas by simple horizontal or lateral drilling techniques on the, on the left there. And on the right, we are developing our first power plant in a modular design, starting out in one megawatt units. And that is to reduce risk and capex as we grow in this very important phase of our development. Next slide. We have independently certified gas reserves. Next slide. The aforementioned Saroe uh, substation on the left, where we'll be adjoining into the existing uh, power grid. And on the right, it gives you an idea of what the countryside's like, where we're currently drilling and flaring gas. Next slide. The objective is to mix some solar in with our gas-fired power because Gas is an ideal fuel to support renewables, particularly solar, and thereby we can make a 24 seven cleaner product than would otherwise be the case. And we have a solar generation license in place, which is uh, a, uh, uh, an, uh, uh, something that is an achievement as well in Botswana, given the, the uh, approvals regime that we all have to work under. It's very uh, cumbersome to say the least, but we've achieved that as well. Next slide. We have a, 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 a prototype being built in Brisbane with our hydrogen partners, Synergen Met. Now, the unique aspect of this hydrogen uh, project is they've already done it in, a, uh, in a, an initial prototype in Brisbane. Now, we're converting that technology to take our gas, our CH4, and directly split it to hydrogen and solid carbon. The hydrogen will be initially fed back into our power plant and then will ultimately be used for cleaner fuel, uh, assuming the, uh, the prototype all goes according to plan. And that's why one builds a prototype, of course. In the solid carbon, there is a market for that in South Africa that we've currently uh, already uh, delineated. Next slide. We support a number of uh, local community initiatives, and that's part of uh, our our approach in Botswana to be a part of the local community and to support wherever we can. Next slide. So in summary, we're developing the Lacetti Gas to Power project. Gas is now good again. Gas is a, an excellent fuel to deliver instant power, to deliver uh, uh, air conditioning or heat, depending on uh, what's required as far as temperature amelioration. We have a couple of other projects as well, which are developing in the background, not as high a priority as a gas to power, of course, and that's our solar and hydrogen and solid carbon projects. We have extensive approvals in place and a very supportive uh, local community and government as we're moving to get this project into first revenue. Thank you.
Thanks, Tony. Bang on time. Um, fascinating story, actually. Now, now Botswana has been heavily reliant on South Africa for its energy um, previously. So how do you see that kind of South African instability playing into, into your hands? Uh, thank you, Tim. Yes, indeed. Uh, South Africa is, is very uh, insecure in its power supply at the moment, and most uh, third-party evaluations suggest that it's just on the brink of collapse, and it is a, a, a major need for both internally within their country and the surrounding countries to develop more power projects. Now, coal is still uh, not in vogue as opposed to gas. A gas, of course, can produce uh, not only base load, but peaking power, we can turn it on and off. So it's a, it's a beautiful fuel to have available for energy generation. And ultimately, once we've satisfied the Botswana power needs, we would uh, love to be able to export into neighbouring countries, including uh, South Africa, and all that's doable via the Southern African power pool and all the countries in the Southern African power pool, a region of some 500 uh, billion people, uh, 500 million people rather, uh, they're all connected by the Southern African power pool. And, and what's the political environment like in Botswana? I mean, you've got uh, an aligned shareholder there. Is there any risk in that? I'm sure you get asked that question. Um, there's, there's, uh, and, and what, what do you mean by that, Tim? Sorry. Oh, just what's the, what's the political environment like there uh, currently? I, you know, we don't know a lot about it. So can you give us some more colour there? Well, certainly, certainly. Uh, Botswana is a very stable democracy. It's been independent uh, since the mid 60s. It's a former protectorate of, of, the, uh, of England, of, uh, of Britain, and therefore it has inherited all English laws and regulations and a Westminster style of parliament. So there's been uh, free and fair elections from day one and always a smooth uh, transition of power. Uh, the government and the people of Botswana have been very lucky in having the diamonds to, uh, to develop and to help fund infrastructure, et cetera, but they won't last forever. And they are seeking very supportive of new uh, industries, including mining and gas development to assist the country to grow and to prosper. Thanks, Tony. And, and there's a question here, what, what is the potential to increase your flow rates and what's the plan to do that? Uh, yes, indeed. We're, uh, we've learned a lot of lessons as we've developed our field at Lissetti over the years. And what we've found is that with additional uh, lateral wells, we should be able to increase the flow rate. And just recently, with all of our geotechnical evaluation over the previous period, we've determined that there's only a fraction of the well bore probably open to, uh, to flowing at the moment. So if we uh, tweak and modify our new wells such that uh, we're getting a, a significant amount uh, more of that well bore open and flowing that our gas flow rate should uh, commensurately increase. And with all of these sorts of projects, the flow rate uh, goes straight to your bottom line. So that will be the objective uh, early next year when we get drilling again to, uh, to uh, increase the flow rate and to get more gas flowing. And that should flow straight to the, the ultimate bottom line, Tim. And, and Tony, just finally, what, what sort of capex are we talking? And, and can you give us uh, some guidelines around uh, time time frames? Well, for the transmission line, it's about uh, five million dollars to connect to the grid. Plus, there's some ancillary uh, equipment and costs that go with that. Uh, the thing about our drilling, we can drill wells cheaper than uh, I've been involved with in Australia. The Australian costs. And we still we have colleagues over here in Australia drilling wells in Queensland. We're using a similar technique. The Queensland wells are somewhere between three and five times the cost of, of an equivalent well in Botswana. And uh, effectively, that means we can get a, a full uh, development pod comprising a vertical well and two lateral wells uh, down for uh, about one and a half million dollars. So that's that's a, a very, very good price. And the more we drill, the, uh, the more efficient we're getting at it. Tony, that's all we have time for. Thank you for your time. Have a nice weekend. Thank you, Tim.